Hello guys, we're here at PAX East. I'm in the Compulsion booth, and today I'm joined by Sam, the CEO of Compulsion, and CEO, right? CEO. Yeah, right, right, not the CEO. Not CEO. Uh, Another guy, but he's not here yet. He has those perks, you know. Right, right, it's, that's the benefit of, you know, I need to start doing that. Anyways, uh, I've, I played Contrast, and I've been watching We Happy Few, which is the game we're gonna talk about today, uh, since last year. Can, for anyone that hasn't stalked your website as much as I have, can you basically break down the game and talk about it a little bit? Okay, so super quickly, it is a game set in the 1960s in a dystopian England uh, where everyone is obsessed with happiness. And they put on this face, they take a drug called joy, and they heavily punish anybody who is not happy like them. So for example, you can see here, there's a lovely new flavor of strawberry joy, tiny little pills that they take to keep themselves happy, but it makes them a little bit psychotic. So the game is all about learning to blend in with these people, learning to conform and survive and ultimately escape from a procedurally generated English city. But there's a whole lot more to it, so. So, uh, last year when I talked with you guys a bit, um, as I understand it, you know, everyone, so, so, so Germany had occupied England for a period of time, correct? And, and after that, uh, everyone, you start taking joy. They're, they're all, everyone's happy, and and you, you you've stopped taking joy. The the character you're playing as, you're no longer taking joy. But you have that option. You can still take the drug. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, um, inside the game, in a bunch of different locations, you can find little joy pills. So you can take the joy. It changes the world around you. So it makes everything seem super happy, and everybody's friendly, and they don't want to kill you anymore. And you know, there's blue sky where there was gray sky beforehand. Um, and ultimately it kind of changes the rules of the game a little bit. But you can only do that for a short time before you crash pretty hard. And so as soon as you start crashing, everybody starts freaking out because they think you're going to become a downer again, which of course you are. So the game is learning to um, know when to use that drug or avoid it completely, basically. So you said it's procedurally generated. Uh, so that means everyone that plays the game is going to kind of get a different experience from the game. What is the, the end goal, so to speak? So the end goal for the player is to generally escape. Certainly for the first player character, it's to escape. We have three characters and they all roughly want to do that, but they have slightly different motivations and reasons for, for going through this world. And also different reasons for being off the drug in the first place. Um, so the goal is to, at least initially, just to learn to understand how to feed yourself, to get clean water that isn't laced with joy, um, to make sure you can sleep safely, uh, and then find your way through the world. So that takes a little bit of time to get used to that stuff, and after that you can focus on, okay, so how do I escape? Which is a bit like a, it's a bit like a roguelike in a sense, like in Binding of Isaac, the first few, you know, first floor, you're probably just sitting there going, okay, how do I shoot properly? Okay, it's not too bad, okay, how do I loot things? That's good, but then after a while you're like, okay, well, how do I scrounge up on items? How do I use these things to actually get past this boss, and then the next boss, and then the next boss? So. Uh, so once you escape, it's uh, game done, so to speak, I'm assuming. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Uh, how long is the gameplay from start to finish uh, for the average? I mean, I'm assuming, you know, since you, uh, you, like you said, it can be, it's kind of, it sounds like you could play the game however you would like, but for the average player, how long will, it, will, will, will the game last? Okay, so there are two modes. So the first mode is a sandbox style mode, which is a bit like Don't Starve, where you can just survive for as long as you want. It's pretty underdeveloped right now. Um, but you know we've had people play for a, a, a day of playtesting and not really get off the first island. Uh, and the same case is uh, the same for the story mode. Sorry, which is we had aimed for between like five and seven hours for a playthrough. But right now we have focus testers and for like an eight-hour day, and they still haven't finished the first island. So, so I can't tell you. We're working on it, but I don't know. So right now it feels like it's too long, and we're trying to shorten it a little bit. But we don't until we build the rest of the content. We don't know. So you mentioned islands. Uh, what do you mean by that? Okay, so have you played FTL? Yes, yes, uh, that's the, 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 the ship game. You, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, you can think about it like FTL in that you have sectors. So you, you hop between stars, and at the end of that, you hop to a new sector, which has got a whole new set of stars for you to explore. Islands are much like that. You have a whole area to explore, and then there's a bridge at the end of it which has certain challenges. You have to figure out, okay, how do I get all of the stuff that I need to get to pass through that bridge in one of a variety of ways? Um, and you have, the main game right now has five islands. And the idea is that you have to learn how to survive properly in each one, and they are, they are different. Yeah. So you mentioned it's like a roguelike. Uh, does that mean if I come to the bridge and I wasn't prepared correctly and I fell, is it game over completely? Yes and no. So originally, yes. 
uh, it was supposed to be completely permitted 100% uh, of the time. Uh, but then we realized that everybody who was playing our game were like, hey, um, I played for two hours and I'm dead again and I don't like it. And we were like, okay, uh, well, I guess that's not going to work. So um, permadeath is now an option, kind of like in XCOM where you have a modifier for hardcore difficulty. So you, you know, in XCOM you have Iron Man, so you can't save, basically. You get one save, one chance. So we have the same thing for an option of permadeath. So, um, you know, the people that really want to challenge can play on the hard difficulty on permadeath and, yeah, it's pretty hard. So, yeah. What is the what is the art inspired like the the look of the game? What inspired that look? It really reminds me of Bioshock. I don't know if I'm the only one that says that, but it's the only thing. I, I don't. And maybe that's what gravitates me towards the game. Is that just me or? No, that's definitely not just you. Um, and in fact, it's one of the reasons why we had to deal with the difficulty in the way that we did because we had a lot of people who were like, "This looks like Bioshock," and we're like, "Well, it's a bit more difficult than Bioshock," <laughs> so we had to change it. But uh, the art itself. Um, it was come up with by our, our art director, Whitney Clayton, um, and she was really excited about the idea of the 60s and particularly retrofuturism. She feels like 60s is this great period where they had so much optimism and hope for the future and they made these ridiculous things, you know, these chairs that were super uncomfortable but looked so space age. Yeah, right. And, you know, we have a whole bunch of things in the booth here actually, which are like these old 60s pieces that we actually bought from a kitchen store to bring to PAX. Um, and they look totally unfunctional, but you know, they look cool. So she kind of loved that optimism um, clashing with some very real social struggles uh, throughout Britain at the time. So um, the art style itself is based a little bit on what we did with Contrast, that whole heavily stylized thing. And because it's in the past, in a time which is heavily stylized itself, I think that's where the Bioshock comparisons come from. Um, but also people see the masks and, and just like, yeah, it looks like Bioshock. So. Right, I guess it's the mask too. Yeah, it brings you back to Rapture. Um, so uh, you're showing the game on an Xbox. Is it uh, is it going to be uh, like what what platforms is the game going to be available on? So uh, we're starting out in Steam on Steam on early access and on Xbox One on the game preview program. Um, so we haven't announced a release date for that yet, but it's it's coming up reasonably soonish. Uh, we're basically just making sure that the game is really 100% as we want it to be for that that. That you know initial launch. Um, so those are the, the two initial platforms. Uh, we've also announced Mac and Linux, uh, but we want to make sure that uh, we're really building the game properly. And then once we've got the 1.0 launch, which will have all of the narrative story um, launching at the same time, uh, we'll be working on the Mac and Linux versions as well. Yeah. And then after that, obviously, I cannot possibly say. I I uh, you recently did a Kickstarter. Uh, what all? I I'm assuming that did really well because uh, the game is it looks amazing. Um, what all uh, did you offer with that? I'm just curious. Um, so the probably the most interesting thing that we did, we did a whole bunch of different options for people who wanted to you know contribute more. Uh, but my favorite part of it was the pre-alpha um, access. So basically, what we said was, hey, pay a little bit more money and you can get access to the game right now. You can comment on it all the way through development, and you know we'll read everything you say and we'll look into it and we have done so we've had a whole bunch of people giving us feedback on our forums um, through social media and all the other sort of things and it's made the game just so much better it's it's kind of incredible because I think so many games would be better because of this process but so few of them do it so it's a huge experiment for us but I think it's really really cool to be very open about what we're doing I think it's I think it's great you mentioned there's three characters are they all available from the start of the game or is it something where you play one you unlock the next how does that work Play one, unlock the next, basically. So um, we haven't yet decided whether we want um, you to unlock both characters very quickly or say unlock one at the end of a playthrough. Uh, but the idea is that you will start with only one and then you'll unlock one of them and then the other one uh, over time. You mentioned they have different stories. Do they have different attributes? Like, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, they all play in different ways. We haven't actually really spoken about the characters and how they work and who they are and that sort of thing apart from uh, the main character that you start as. Uh, so to give you an example, Arthur, the main guy you start as, he's a bit of a librarian. He's a tall, geeky fellow, so he's a, he's good at figuring things out, generally speaking. Not that good in a fight, though, so uh, he's not he's not the best at that sort of thing. Uh, another character might be uh, much better at fighting, so they might hit for more damage, they might have more stamina, more health, but they might be completely useless at crafting anything that's based on chemicals, for example, which is one of the... Uh, sort of pillars of our crafting system, so, yeah. Okay, tell me more about the crafting system. 
Okay, so uh, in We Happy Few, scrounge for a lot of equipment and items, um, and you are going to need to craft stuff to help you to survive. So, uh, for example, you might craft a, a healing item, like a healing balm from plants. Uh, you might craft a giant weapon that kind of looks like a big pipe with a battery stuck on the end and some nails on it, and it shocks people when you hit it. Um, that takes a bit more resources to craft. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of other things as well. So there are like trap disarming tools, there are traps and bombs themselves. Uh, we don't have like ranged weapons like guns, it's not the game for that. Um, it's really melee combat and ranged throwable weapons. So, I mean, right now you can craft a berserk bomb. So if you craft a berserk bomb, you want a distraction over there, you throw the bomb, everybody in that area starts attacking everybody around them, and you can go and do whatever nefarious purpose it is that you, you were there for. Where can people find you to check out the game, this and Contrast? So probably the best place to start is our website. So that's uh, compulsiongames.com. If you just want to check out We Happy Few, wehappyfewgame.com, just redirect there. Uh, but you can also check out the Steam forums because they're up and up and about. So you can ask us any questions there on our forums, on our social media. We pretty much respond everywhere. So it's cool. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sam, for meeting me. Pleasure.